Uh, my name is Linda Thornton and uh, I live in New Zealand. Um, I have a daughter with Proud of Willie Syndrome and she turns 37 this year. I think 30 years ago was really tough. Um, it certainly was here in New Zealand. It was impossible to get a diagnosis. Um, I had several diagnoses for Francie, my daughter, and none of them was Proud of Willy Syndrome. And then I um, was given a, an article in the Australian Women's Weekly to read. And this was an article about a young girl who had Proud of Willy. And I looked at it and the scales just fell from my eyes. And I thought, this is my daughter, everything that's said in here. And Francie at the time was three and a half. So I clutched the Australian Women's Weekly under one arm and went along to the paediatrician at the uh, hospital and said, I think this is what my daughter has. And of course he was not impressed, really, not impressed. And so he sent me along to a, a, for a second opinion. And at that point, uh, I took Francie along. And the woman, the specialist that was doing the diagnosis said, look, wait a minute. She said, pointing to a girl down the corridor, that's, that's so-and-so with Proud of Willie. You don't think your daughter's got that, do you? And again, the scales fell from my eyes. And I knew that's what she had. And so from that point on, I worked very hard to find the answers. And of course, there was no Skype, no Zoom, no, no um, email even in those days. So it was done by letters and it was a long and arduous journey. And I think for most parents, trusting their instincts and knowing that something is wrong is so important because there are so many people that don't understand Prada Willie. So 30 years ago, it was pretty much impossible to find the right diagnosis. I think it was specifically very important to create IPSO because it brought together all the countries in the world and you just suddenly realised that you weren't alone in the world and that um, having a daughter, for my sake, with Proud of Willie, that, and going to that first international conference in uh, Nordweikerhout in, in um, Holland was amazing because there were professionals, there were people with Proud of Willie and there were parents. Being able to reach out and talk to somebody from Denmark, from um, Spain, from England, from Australia, it just made the world of difference. And I think that is Ipso's role in the world to make that difference for parents. To keep on going the way we have gone, to be in, as ex inclusive as we have been to broaden the base and knowledge of Prada Willie syndrome around the world in different languages to gather people together under one umbrella I think that stands that stands a lot and in, in, in my view it stands for everything say to learn as much as you can, to find as, as the, the support that you can via the internet, via your association, via IPSO, to use the organisations, to use the knowledge of people who are willing in their fields of uh, specialised information to share their knowledge, make use of it, learn as much as you can, fight for your child, fight for her or his rights. Hello, my name is Marguerite Hughes. I'm the CEO of IPSO. The day my son was diagnosed with prader willi syndrome over 17 years ago was one of the saddest days of my life. It was also one of the luckiest because getting that diagnosis just a few weeks after his birth meant that his father and I could learn how best to care for him. There are many countries in which diagnostic testing for prader willi syndrome is unavailable or unaffordable. For the last 18 years, IPSO has provided a free diagnostic testing service to families from 49 countries. Each diagnosis costs IPSO 200 euros, and we rely entirely on donations to provide the service. If, like my son, your child was diagnosed, please help another family to also receive a diagnosis by donating what you can at www.ipso.org. Thank you.